equations to know for the test. Einstein's equation for time. The equation for distance. And his uh, kinetic energy equation. And finally, uh, the equation for the uh, change in mass. Now, this is not exactly how it's all presented in the material or in the literature. I rewrote them because these are all pertaining to the object that is moving. All the other ones, like the T knots and the L knot, is for the observer. Which is for the observer, which we always assume is um, standing still. So, now, for the observer, kind of keep in mind that we can use the so-called normal equations, like velocity is distance divided by time, kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, um, because he's not moving, and we can just use those typical equations that Newton gave us. And then, but for the object moving, though, we have to apply Einstein. And, and we have to use his equations to convert, like, the observer's time, to convert the observer's time into the object reference time period. Um, understand that there is no difference between Einstein's expression for kinetic energy and our normal expression for kinetic energy, except that our normal expression is used when velocities are very small, small velocities. Otherwise, um, even at the low velocities, Einstein's equation will work if your calculator is um, is, is accurate enough. You need to go to about 15 or 20 decimal places for Einstein's equation to work. Otherwise, you're going to get zero, which is what we're going to take a look at in just a second. So even though the time equation is a little bit different, I rewrote it because I think it makes more sense and it's, and it's a little bit more consistent this way where we're solving everything for the moving object. Let's look at an example. Starting off kind of simple, let's say the velocity is 44 meters per second. It's about 100 miles an hour. And let's say we want to go some distance, um, 15,000 meters, for lack of anything else. So the first question might be, how long for the observer? How long would observer measure? And remember, with the observer, we get to use our basic equation. Velocity is distance divided by time. So time is distance divided by velocity. We plug in 15,000 meters divided by 44 meters per second. And I really don't know what that is. It's about 341 seconds. Lovely. Now, let's look at it 
from the object's perspective in the object's time frame. From the object's time frame, we have to use Einstein. 1 minus v squared over c squared. Um, we're going to plug in uh, 341 seconds. T naught is the observer's time period. It's T naught. He's not moving. 1 minus 44 squared over C. And remember, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. Now, calculator fun. This term is going to be really small. Um, 44 squared, 3e to the 8th squared. This term is 2.15 times 10 to the negative 14th. And so when we take 1 minus this number, most calculators, unless they go 15, 20 decimal places, is going to give you the answer of 1. If you're using a computer like an Excel spreadsheet, it'll it can work it out that many decimal places, but otherwise it's going to give you an answer of 1, which when we take 341 seconds times 1, I don't need a calculator for that. I get 341 seconds, which simply means our velocity is not fast enough for the Einstein equations to kick in. The difference is so minute, we're not going to see the we're not going to see any effect. And we can say the same thing is going to be true if we look at the distance the object travels. If we want to calculate L, it's going to be 15,000 meters. They we're not going to have an appreciable change in distance because the conversion factor, or the Einstein factor, or whatever you want to call it, the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared is still going to be 1. And the same thing for the mass. No difference in the mass if we calculated an effect on mass. However, let's look at kinetic energy real quick. Um, m naught c squared over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared minus. And let's look at our normal way of calculating it. We'll get an answer for our normal calculation. And if we use, let's say it's 100 kilograms, just for the fun of it. If we use um, that, we're going to get 96,800 joules. With Einstein's equation, though, we run into a slight snag because this bottom turn for most calculators is going to give us 1. And we end up with m naught c squared minus m naught c squared, which is a big fat 0, which, of course, if it's moving, kinetic energy can't be 0. So hopefully you would recognize that actually can't be the right answer of zero joules. Um, here again, if you use something like Excel, it'll calculate it out. Because this isn't actually one. It, 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 it's, it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, I think. It's actually that number. And so Excel can handle that, but most calculators can't. Um, you have to get up to a high enough velocity for the kinetic energy equation, um, for Einstein's kinetic energy equation, to match up nicely with our classical 1 half mv squared, um, something up the, on the order of a million or five million meters per second. Um, and even then, it's still kind of a, um, even then, the, uh, the, the factor there is still pretty, pretty darn small. It's like point, 
999 something. Um, okay. Now, next thing to understand. Um, if I give you a velocity in terms of C, a velocity of 0.8 C, 0.8 times the speed of light, to convert that into meters per second, you simply take 0.8 times the speed of light. And uh, 2.4 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So be able to be able to handle that little change also. Um, and if I give you a distance in terms of light years, simply remember a light year is like a regular year, just half the calories. I got the same response in class, too. Um, a light year is the distance light travels in one year. And if light goes at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters, Every second, um, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, and we're going for 1.5 years. Sorry, I'm running out of room. And so we just have to multiply everything, and it would work out fine, 1.5 years. And when you do this, 3e to the 8th, 24, 365, 1.5, then light goes a distance of 1.41912e to the 16th meters in the 1.5 light years um, to convert that to meters. Um, so you need to be able to work those equations with these numbers as well and to make these conversions.